Welcome to our midweek, uh, short midweek devotion. Something for you to ponder about. And I've got something really sort of deep to talk about today. We'll see how it goes. But before I do that, for the last few days, I've been up in cold fresh water in Michigan on Lake Huron. So I decided to see if I could catch the, the beauty of nature above and below uh, Lake Huron the same way I did over in the Caribbean. So here's what I came up with. And when we come I've used this uh, makeshift whiteboard before, so I think I'm going to use it right now as we start a discussion on ethics. Uh, it may be a little deep and take a little bit of um, wrestling, so I don't ask you know any week that you accept what I say, it's only that you kind of ponder the ideas. Now, if we look at morality and if we look at ethics, and if we do it in a formal type of way, which is what I plan to do right now, then we have to start with one basic question. There are two major, like maybe put here and here, two major branches of ethics. One is teleological. That comes from the word telos, that means end. That is, the ends justify the means or, or it's um, the consequences matter. And that is one type of ethics. The other type of ethics is deontological. The word means being, what it means to be something. And uh, the idea being that there are some things in and of themselves that are wrong. So years ago, when I was a little kid, the world seemed kind of black and white and uh, you know, I thought there's absolute right, absolute wrong. In recent years, more and more, I talk with people that believe there's no such thing as absolute right and absolute wrong. There's no such thing as morality, no such thing as evil or good, but rather everything has to be looked through the lens of the consequences. Therefore, an action may be well-intended but bring about painful results, and that is an immoral or an unethical action. Now, there could be an action that um, is not with a sincere, pure motive, but greed, but it 
comes out for many people to have a pleasurable, a good outcome, and therefore that action is right. Who's to say that it's wrong, as long as I'm not hurting somebody else, if I do something that gives me more pleasure? And so we have this idea that, um, that right and wrong are kind of archaic, but rather the consequences, the outcome. So this is consequential ethics that I put on this side. I'll jump to the other side of my little makeshift whiteboard now. And let's say the other side is not consequentialist ethics, but non-consequentialist ethics. That is the belief that there are some things in and of themselves that are just plain wrong always wrong, always have been wrong, always will be wrong. In every situation, in every history, in every culture, they're just wrong. So the question is, which are you? You are either in the consequentialist camp or you're in the non-consequentialist camp, but do you know which camp you're in? I, I have this... Um, fairly simple test, although not necessarily easy. It's simple because it only takes one question. And if you answer that question one way, you're in the consequentialist camp. If you answer that question another way, you're in the non-consequentialist camp. So here's the question. Can you think of anything that is just plain wrong among all, all people, all groups, in all of history, in every situation, that no matter where you put it, that would just plain be wrong. It only takes one. Uh, pretty much everybody agrees that, that there is some gray matter out there in different areas of morality. For instance, um, if you lie to someone to bring about a good end, to protect them from something that would be harmful to them, is that lie morally wrong or not? Or if the nation, the government, lies about something and doesn't come forth uh, forthright with something that has to do with national security, is that serving a greater good, and is it morally justifiable to lie in that situation? We also may struggle with the gray area of what is permissible and moral or immoral today might not have been immoral in an earlier day. For instance, we may shock ourselves when we watch a movie that was made in the Oh, before 1970, perhaps, in the 60s or 50s or 40s, and we, or 30s or 20s, and we, we look at that movie and we think, whoa, you couldn't make that today. You know, that, that, would, be, that would be dropped. It's, it's racist. It's uh, stereotypical. It uh, belittles women. It, it uses, it's, the characters all smoke all the time. You know? So then the question is, if we see those things as wrong today, were they also wrong back in that day? Or at that time, at that culture, because we didn't have the sensitivities that we have today, does that mean they really were okay in that culture, but not in our culture? Well, what we're looking for is one thing. Only one is all it needs that transcends everything else um, as absolutely wrong among all groups, in all times, in all situations. Now, that may be harder to find than what, you, um, what it seems like. And it may be you find that you are a consequentialist, that is, that, that you don't think that there is anything that is absolutely wrong. But it may also be that you just haven't dug deep enough and you do find something. So, I would suggest First of all, let's look at things that are, I don't know, that we are aghast at 
in our society. That is, they are just so wrong. We, we don't even speak them out loud. Racism. Is there any time, any place, any situation where it might have been permissible to be racist? Abusing children. Is there a time and a place where under the proper situations it probably was morally justified to abuse children? Physically abuse them, emotionally abuse them, sexually abuse them? Can you conceive of a time and a place where that would be okay? Torture of weak, defenseless animals. Was there ever a time and a place and a situation where it was or really was morally justified to do something like that? Well, if you can't find anything like that among the aha moments of our culture, maybe go back before you're done with this exercise. Any time and any place in history where there was a morality that seems to have stayed true in all cultures, all times, and all places. Well, keep looking at these because the first big question is consequentialist, non-consequentialist. And then, uh, depending on how you answer that question, there's a, a second question that goes down both sides, but I'll only choose one side. So take a few moments to think about this. Maybe finish this. Let's assume that you've had a little bit of time to think about this. And you're not taking it lightly and you're kind of chewing on it a, a little bit. And so you come up with an answer that, um, yeah, I think there is something that is always wrong. That should never be considered to be moral, whatever this thing is you found that sticks you in a non-consequentialist camp. That is, that there is something out there that is just plain, absolutely wrong. Here's the next question. Who says so? Like, who says this thing that you have found is wrong? Because what you have done, in effect, um, philosophically, is that you have elevated some area of right and wrong to where it supersedes history, supersedes culture, supersedes humanity, supersedes who we are, and that there is out there a standard of evil, of good, of right, of wrong, of moral or immoral, ethical or unethical, at least in this one thing, there is a standard that does not come from human culture. Now, if everything is relative, then we, from such country or country to country, culture to culture, generation to generation, we write the rules, we define morality. That if, uh, if we define morality, it is subject to us, and we can decide in the 21st century that some of the things in the 20th century are immoral for our situation. And likewise, in the 22nd century, there will be people that find us immoral in their areas because we are defining morality. But if we are not defining morality, if morality is bigger than us, then the question is, where does morality come from? We don't define it, we discover it. It's there bigger than us and outside of us and supersedes us. Now that brings several possibilities. The most accepted way historically is the belief that there is a superior intelligence, superior source of morality that transcends what we invent ourselves. You know, of course I'm talking about God. Well, once again, we've come to the end of this short devotion. Once again, we've come to the middle of a week and only have a few days left. 
before we worship with each other once again. May God watch you this week and may God um, watch over your musings, your ponderings, your thinking and, and keep you on a, a moral track.